On April 2, 2022, Lithuania's government announced that it had completely abandoned Russian gas, announcing that its gas transmission system has been operating without Russian gas imports since the beginning of April. The move, it said, was a response to Russia's quote-unquote energy blackmail in Europe and the war in Ukraine. So how did it achieve this, and what does it mean for Lithuania? Let's find out in today's video. In the April 2nd announcement, Lithuania's gas transmission system operator, Amber Grid, confirmed that data showed that the import of Russian gas for Lithuania's needs through the Lithuanian-Belarusian interconnection was equal to 0 megawatt hours. Now, much of Lithuania's gas supplies come through Klaipeda's liquefied natural gas terminal. The port city will now see three large cargo shipments of liquefied natural gas come through the terminal each month, which the government says is anticipated to be enough for all customers. The government adds that, if necessary, gas can also be delivered to Lithuania via the gas link with Latvia, and, as of May 1st, through the gas link with Poland. We know that gas now comes through Klaipeda, but this is only a seaport and a terminal for the natural gas. So where is it actually coming from? Well, according to the website Energy Monitor, the main source of LNG at Klaipeda has been and remains Norway. However, the website reports that the US increased its deliveries to Lithuania in 2020. Minister of Energy Danis Krevis called the achievement a turning point in the history of Lithuania's energy independence saying, we are the first EU country among Gazprom's supply countries to gain independence from Russian gas supplies. And this is the result of a multi-year coherent energy policy and timely infrastructure decisions. Now, the government says that Russia's demand to pay for gas in rubles is meaningless for Lithuania, since it doesn't need to pay Russia for gas anymore. Now that demand can be met with other sources, Russia's Gazprom says that it no longer wants to bring in gas from Russia via the Lithuanian-Belarusian link. There is one exception, however. Gas does continue to flow from Russia to Belarus to Lithuania, but only as it transits through to the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad, or Königsberg, as the Lithuanian government calls it. However, this is done in a different technical mode than usual, ensuring only the transfer of the amount of gas required for transit. This journey to eliminating the import of Russian gas wasn't easy, nor was it quick. In fact, this achievement was a 30-year process, with many lessons learned along the way. When Lithuania gained its independence from the Soviet Union, it was still fully dependent on Russian oil and gas. Punishing Lithuania for its actions, Moscow cut oil and gas deliveries to Lithuania in April 1990. This two-month-long cut caused a spike in gasoline prices and led to the shutting down of many factories in Lithuania. We were challenged in the beginning of the 90s. Uh, maybe you don't, do not remember, but I, I, I do. There were empty streets because there was no gas, no, no cars. Uh, it was winter time, I remember, and cold in the flats. It was kind of a lesson to us because you'd like to be independent, so okay, you can be independent. According to the Washington Post, Lithuania hired an American firm to build a new oil import terminal shortly after gaining independence from the Soviet Union. This oil import terminal was completed in 1999. Buying non-Russian oil was more expensive, but this liberated Lithuania from its reliance on Russian pipelines. Energy pressure intensified with the rise of Vladimir Putin, but especially after Lithuania joined the EU and NATO in 2004. It was at this time that Russia started charging Lithuania significantly more for natural gas than other European customers as a form of punishment. So over the last 20 years, Lithuania has continued to press forward to rid itself of Russian oil and gas. One of the biggest moves was the construction of a liquefied natural gas, or LNG, terminal, which began operating around 2014. As a floating liquefied natural gas terminal, the $100 million ship was built to break Russia's grip on the country's energy supply. Her name? Independence. To understand what is to be energy independent, you have to go back to understand what is to be energy dependent country. Lithuania was part of the Soviet Union for many years, so our infrastructure was created to be part of Soviet infrastructure as well. According to PBS, nearly 100% of Lithuania's gas supplies came from imports of Russian gas in 2015. Six years later, in 2021, roughly 26% of Lithuania's gas supplies came from deliveries from a Russian gas pipeline, while 62% came via Klaipeda's LNG terminal with the remaining 12% imported from Latvia. So how will this move affect Lithuania? Well, in a moral sense, Lithuania can proudly claim 
that it has gone a step further to ensure that it is not funding Putin's war in Ukraine. In fact, Lithuanian President Gitanas Nauseda posted to Twitter in April urging other European nations to follow Lithuania's lead. And as for day-to-day -day impact, abandoning Russian gas will mean that the cost of energy in Lithuania is even higher than it was. With energy being a key driver of the economy, this will affect much of Lithuanian life. In fact, French media outlet Euronews reported that in March, Lithuania had the highest inflation rate in the EU at 15.7%. According to Eurostat, this was driven by energy costs that surged by almost 13% in Europe in the last month alone. Even before the war, energy prices were at record highs, with Lithuanian heating bills rising between 100 and 150% for households this past winter. As other European countries continue to move towards abandoning the import of Russian oil and gas, non-Russian supplies are likely to increase in price, impacting Lithuania and much of Europe. On one hand, it's understandable why larger European economies are having trouble quitting their addiction to Russian oil and gas. A spike in energy prices will lead to inflation and a rise in the cost of living. If price rises are significant enough, then this could lead to political and social instability. However, it's crazy to think that Europe continues to pay hundreds of millions of euros to Russia every day, which in turn continues to fund Putin's continued invasion of Ukraine. I think uh, next to Russia, we are suffering the most from the sanctions. Um, uh, our agriculture sector or our transport sector, they are suffering every day. And uh, despite that fact, we are still uh, being one of the biggest proponents uh, of, of the sanctions, uh, because that's the only way how you can stop aggressions, how you can uh, send very strong messages to, to, to Russian leadership. But if you live in Lithuania, have you seen costs of everyday items rising? Share your experience by leaving a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.